Hey there, Chris Callot with 123 Muse here. Let's take a look at our new CVP2, which is a custom video player. Now, version one uh, was a great widget. You could do lots with it, but it wasn't responsive. And of course, Muse wasn't responsive at the time, so that was fine. But now we need a responsive widget, and we wanted to also update um, its functionality, um, give it the greater capability so they could play other video sources as well. And so we're very pleased to produce and uh, show you our new CVP2. So let's take a look at it in action. So Command Shift E to preview. And we can see here that uh, first of all, everything works nice and everything scales nicely and is fully responsive. So we're playing our video here. We've got our audio playing here. This is just a little uh, video that we put together to show you uh, that the widget is fully active. And we have this nice hover effect here, icons, uh, simple player controls, and um, full screen capabilities. So let's jump back into Muse and take a look at the settings. Now, as you can see here, we have our first panel when you open up the widget options is the video basics. So you could just put this widget onto the um, page just set up the videos here and be done with it if that's what you wanted but we also have a lot of other customization which is why it's called custom video player but we have now added the ability to have self-hosted videos so that's videos hosted on your site remote hosted so you could be hosting that video in Dropbox or on Vimeo or somewhere else YouTube and Vimeo, so you just need the IDs for that. And as we choose the different options, so if we chose YouTube, you can see the YouTube ID is now available. If we went to Vimeo, it activates the Vimeo ID. So you can't, if whatever you've selected, it will only give you the options relating to that selection. So let's go to our remote hosted here, and we're going to pull in this video, or let's go to self hosted. And we can see here MP4 file, a WebM file, and the poster image. Don't forget, we need a poster image when we're using HTML5 video players because if the video player is not going to automatically play on um, on a mobile device, then we need the poster image there. Um, and we also want it for when we're laying the item out on the page. We want to see a representation of what that video is going to be. So that's the basic settings, the video basics. Let's take a look at the customization. First of all, we have the main look. Now the player accent color, that relates to the accent color when you hover over the icons. The background, as you saw there, went white. We had that white circle, so that's that. The player controls padding. So let's bump that up to, let's say, 30. And you'll notice that the player now has a lot more padding around it. So that's what that does. The buttons padding, so this is the padding that goes actually around, let's uh, pop that up to 20 as well. And then if we go to preview, you'll see that, don't worry about that, uh, that message that's coming up there is for uh, another widget that we've got on the page that we, um, we're working on. So now you can see that these buttons have a lot more padding around the icon, so that may be a style that you want to use. Um, going back to our settings here, we have uh, we have the button corner radius. So we at the moment it's a hundred. So you saw that the background the hover effect was round. But if we set it to zero, then there would be square. We can change the button icon size. So we could let's say put that up to thirty. Let's pop our pan down to ten, and you'll see that our icons are now a lot bigger. So again, you can. You can have a, a lot of uh, customization with all the different parts of the widget with just those settings alone. Next, we have our icon color. So we can change these icons on the fly without having to load in new icons. And they're SVG, so they're fully scalable, and we can change the color on the fly. We can also change the icon hover color, so we can create a, a color scheme that matches our look and feel and change both the um, normal color and the hover color. And most importantly now, we can also change the default icon. So they're loaded up now, uh, this set here. 
but if we wanted to change them to a custom set of icons to match our design we can do that too so if we choose the use custom icons we can see our custom icon loader is highlighted let's go to uh, icons like some new icons I prepared and let's load those up and because they're SVGs let's just make them bigger as well because they're SVG files we can also control their color from within the widget so we don't have to um, create icons of a particular color we can just make them in white um, or whatever color we want and the fill will be controlled by the widget let's take a look at that file so if we jump over to Illustrator we can see this is the SVG that controls the icons and as you can see it's a sprite with all of our icons in and this is provided this is within the widgets package as well so it's really easy to make your own icons it's literally just a case of going in and double clicking on one of the items you'll see now that because it's a symbol it becomes editable um, it's slightly bigger than when it's scaled into the um, icon but just make sure that you use the similar dimensions to what we have here and you can make those changes and they can be updated so for example let's say for instance I'm going to edit this one and I'm going to take away let's say let's ungroup this there we go so I'm going to have removed that outro there and we've just got that there now if I close this down I'm going to go back and we can see that that's I'm going to save this out to my desktop save as uh, icons one save that out and then go back to Muse and if we load in our new icons here so I'll go to my desktop icons one you'll see that the uh, the icon has now been updated and no longer has a circle around it it's just the play button as it is. So it's really easy to use uh, another one of uh, the Adobe tools that we have in our tool set to build and could uh, just undo that so that we can we can build um, a really nice set of custom icons however we wish. So and because they're SVG files they're going to be fully scalable and they're going to look great and of course we can control their color by the widget instead of having to do that in um, Illustrator itself. So I'm just going to switch this back to use default. These icons, uh, the default icons are loaded in through a CDN, a content delivery network, so you don't have to worry about uploading those there delivered to the widget via the internet. Let's take a look at the center button. Now the center button um, obviously encourages people to click. This is great for videos on the home page, showcase videos, tour videos, that kind of thing, and it encourages people to click that. So we wanted to give you full control over that. So we have button padding, similar to the controls padding, the button icon size, so you can change that um, in conjunction with the padding. You can also make micro adjustments. Now, the micro adjustments are left and right, and the reason why we have those is you may build a set of icons and they may be slightly off um, for the center button so you can just you can just use the micro increments there to move that icon into the center so you get it perfectly in, into the center the button background color and its opacity and then the button background hover color and its opacity and we can also use a border so if I say switch the opacity of the background to zero and I switch the border on then we can have this nice button ring look so there's lots of capabilities there and finally we have the background controls now this controls the, um, the the controls background here you can see currently it's a black and we've got a flat color we have the choices of none so we could switch that off and just have the um, which is a really nice clean look um, we could have them the flat color gradient color or a pattern so if we choose a gradient color you can see now that the flat color has been deactivated and our gradient is now available so let's uh, change this gradient so we can see so we can create these nice kind of um, 
very fresh looking duotone kind of look to it as well. And if we switch to a pattern, and then I'm going to add a file, uh, let's go to Creative Cloud and grab something from here. Um, in fact, let's just go and get a poster image, for instance. So I'll open that up. Um, and you will see now we're using a background image. So we're using this pattern as a this image here. This is the top of this. And it looks pretty effective. It looks like a really nice player. So um, all of those controls are built in to this widget. And then if you want to as well, you can then just use the uh, click onto the widget and then using the uh, you can replicate the widget copy and paste and you can have multiple instances instances on the page however every instance will have the same look to it and it's whichever um, instance is the last one on the page that is the more will control the look so you couldn't have multiple instances with a different look on every uh, widget which is actually quite useful because you don't have to do all the settings for each instance on the page. You just set it up once and every instance that you drag onto the page will follow those styles. So it's a really nice useful widget. We're really pleased to be able to update it to version 2. Uh, it's got lots of capabilities and we know that there's lots of things in there that you guys have been looking for. So we hope you enjoy using it and thanks for watching.